Welcome to video number four for chapter one for Computer Science Math 451, Numerical Computation. In this video, we'll talk about loss of significance. So, the significant digits of a number that you write down with finite decimal places will be the number of digits starting from the first non-zero to the last digit being presented. Now, loss of significance could happen typically when you get too few significant digits, and typically in subtracting two numbers very close to each other in value. We now demonstrate this phenomenon through a simple example. Say you have a number, let's say it's 1.2345 six, seven, eight. So it has eight significant digits. And you have another number and you want to subtract them with each other. So let's say your other number is minus 1.234. The first four places are the same, but then afterwards they are different. Let's say 4444. Four, four, four. So the second number also has a eight significant digits. So you subtract them, you do your subtraction, what do you get? You get 0 0.000. So the first four digits become zero, and then you have one, two, three, four. Now look at the answer you get here. It has only four significant digits, right? So one, two, three, four. So through the subtraction, you actually lost four significant digits. And now think about this. In this number, what is the possible round of error where you represent it? Well, the error lies in the term coming off after eight. It could be um, seven, five, all the way to eight, four, right? So the error is rel relative error will be 10 to the negative eight. But in this final number, now, this digit here, 4, is not precise because it could be rounded up. So the arrow here will be about 10 to the negative 4, which is much bigger than the previous two numbers. So this phenomenon is called loss of significance, and if that shall occur, the result you have here is not as accurate as the numbers that you send in, and that is not good for computational purpose, because this number is later on being used to compute many other things, and the arrow here will be carried on, will be propagated into further computations. So, um, one should be pretty sensitive to this when you design an algorithm. You should think, could it happen that I have two numbers very close in value, are subtracting each other. If that shall happen, then you should think again, maybe I can do some other computation to avoid this subtraction so I can keep the significant digits, meaning keep the accuracy of your number. Now let's take an example. So we're going to find the roots of a quadratic polynomial, just chosen as x squared minus 40x plus 2. And pretend you are a computer that you have finite capacities of memory space to each store each number. Let's say I will use only four significant digits in my computation. Okay, so um, we all know the quadratic formula. Say you have a polynomial general form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. The two roots can be computed using this quadratic formula, which um, we are all familiar with. So root 1, 2, r12 equals to 1 over 2a, and what's on the numerator is negative d, b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, that's the discriminant, provided it's positive, you get two real roots. Let's say r1 is with the plus sign and r2 is with the minus sign. 
let's look at our example. So in our example, we will have a equals to 1, b equals to negative 40, and c equals to 2. So we plug these values in and we find the two solutions, x1 and x2, it will equal to 20 plus minus square root of 398. So, and now we are a computer, so we will take only four significant digits. So the 20 is represented as 20.00, which is accurate, all four digits. And the square root of 398 is now plus minus 19.95. We're taking four significant digits. So if we use these two values to compute x1, an approximation to x1 up to accuracy of four digits, that will be 20 plus 19.95, which gives me 39.95, where I still keep four significant digits. So this step is okay. And now if I want to compute the second root, which is a subtraction between these two numbers. So I end up doing 20 minus 19.95. And then what I get is 0 0.05. And I have only one significant digit. And this number 5 here is not accurate. It could be 0 0.045 or all the way to 0 0.054. So the arrow is about 10%. So that's pretty bad. Now let's think about what we can do to avoid this situation to occur. So we want to avoid the subtraction where we use to compute the second root. So what other relations do we know that we can use to find the root, the second root, provided that we already know the first root? Okay, so um, we make this observation. If you have two roots, x1, x2, then the product of these two roots exactly equal to c over a, where c is the constant term and a is the coefficient in front of x squared, right? By using that, and then x2 can be computed as c over a times x1. So we'll be doing this division instead. So we don't do subtraction anymore. And then the computer divides these two numbers and then it will round it off and keep four significant digits and you get 0 0.05006 where you regain all the significant digits in your result. Now let's look at um, another example. So we're given a function fx written here. It equals to 1 over square root of x squared plus 2x minus x minus 1 in the denominator. Let's say we want to use a computer to evaluate this function for various values of x. I want you to take a look at the function and think about it. So um, for what values of x will I run into trouble or difficulty, hint, hint, difficulty means probably loss of significance. And if that should happen, could you find a way to fix this difficulty? Okay, now we make the important observation. We see that if x is large and positive, so x has, x has a large and positive value. And we say that in the denominator, the square root of x squared plus 2x and x plus 1, those two values are very close to each other. Do we all see that? Are they very close to each other? Well, let me explain. So x plus 1, let's see. So x plus 1 can be written as square root of x plus 1 square, right? So this gives me square root of x square plus 2x plus 1. So comparing um, this expression to x square plus 2x, they differ by the term 1. 
So if x shall be large and positive, this number is very large, and so is this number. And then you add 1 on top of a very large number, and the 1 cannot make such a big difference. So this is actually very close in value to x squared plus 2x, right? If x is positive and large. Then you know you get into trouble because you end up subtracting two numbers very close in value and they are in the denominator, and then the denominator will be not accurate and further computation will carry on that error. Well, how can we avoid this problem? Well, a standard manipulation of this will be you um, manipulate the function and write it in another way, which is equivalent to the original function that avoids doing the subtraction. So here, a obvious trick to play will be multiply the denominator by its conjugate, so to get rid of it. So let's see how this can be done. So the conjugate of the expression in the denominator will be this one. So instead of minus, I have plus, right? And then I multiply the numerator with the same thing. So the denominator, if I multiply this expression with its conjugate, what I get is this expression square minus um, this expression square, so which I have here. So if you open up x plus 1 square, you get x square plus 2x plus 1. So the denominator simply equals to negative 1. So you get negative of what was in the numerator. So you see, now if x is a large positive number, you in the end add up, end up doing an addition of two numbers, possibly large. But that's okay because you will not lose significant digit by that operation. Well, I hope these two examples um, explains this phenomenon of loss of significance. Okay, and uh, um, in the homework, there will be some similar problems for you to work on. Hope you enjoyed the video.